Jesus name father we ask that as we go into this teaching you will teach us by yourself the words will sink deep into our spirit man they will transform us permanently in the name of Jesus Okay, so today we are looking at the strategy factor. The strategy factor. You see, strategy is the most essential part of leadership. Strategy is what defines organizations. If we've got people here who look into organizations, and I know we do have, or people who work in management, you would notice that there is a lot of emphasis on strategy. Bishop David Oyedepoa said, you do not grow big to manage well. You manage well to grow big. That is the strategy applied. So the quality of any management is primarily a function of the quality of the strategy they put to work. It is not the reverse. It has to be strategy before growth. Strategy before growth. Now the objectives of this teaching are seen on the screen, but we'll go through them very quickly. Things to note. I want us to note first that strategy is king. I doubt that there is a boot camp where we do not overflow this scripture. Luke 14 verse 28 to 30. One of the few small stories that was sandwiched in the Gospels that people rarely refer to. It says if a man wants to build a tower, does he not first sit down and count the costs? That he sits down and puts his materials together. This is how much I have. How much the tower cost. He puts his strategy in place. If he does not first sit with strategy, the scripture says, lest aptly after he has started the building, he will be unable to finish it. And people who pass by will begin to laugh. You see, this is the main reason why people set goals at the beginning of the year. And at the end of the year, the goals they've set are mockeries. Because the strategy was not properly put in place the second illustration there he said if a man wants to if a king wants to go to war would he not first sit down and this is where the strategy comes to play the most and consider whether he is able to confront 20,000 soldiers with this 10,000 now if he has sat down and he has checked the strategy and he sees that his strategy would not deliver the right result to him they says he will do something he will send the message ahead Asking for peace because his strategy has told him by weighing the cost, he's able to tell that there is no victory in this battle. Strategy is king. It doesn't matter how lofty your goal is. If you haven't got the right strategy, the goal is going to remain a wish. God is the king of strategies. God is the king of strategies. He wanted to make Joseph prime minister, but see the strategy. He had to be sold into Egypt. He had to be lied against and he had to get into prison. But the destination was the throne. And while he was in prison, two other people had to come to prison. Somebody says strategy. Type in a chat box, strategy. God is cooking something with your life. Strategy is like when you prepare a meal. In the middle of the meal, it looks like rubbish. It looks like, where are we going with this? But at the end... You can clearly see that something was cooking. While it is cooking, it is the strategy that is at work. The validity of a strategy can only be seen at the end. You see, strategy was the primary reason Jesus was not born in the palace. Strategy was the reason Jesus had to go to the cross. The scripture says if the devil had known that he would rise again. Strategy. Strategy. And I see God helping us to be able to understand this topic enough to implement it in our personal development lives in Jesus' name. Every challenge in life is a strategy challenge. I want us to note that properly. <laughs> he who knows the way leads the negotiation. That's he who has the strategy, has the upper hand in any negotiation or any business deal. You see, Jacob and Laban. Jacob was able to outsmart Laban eventually because Laban knew that he had the flocks, that, that he himself, that's Laban had the flocks. Laban knew about livestock, but Jacob had the strategy. Somebody type in the chat box, strategy is king. When you have the strategy, people have to come to you. That's if you understand the power. 
And I'm saying the second one because we have another example for that, the foolish man. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 14 to 18. You know, the book of Ecclesiastes is a book of wisdom that you have to read carefully. You have to read that book of wisdom with wisdom because the book of Proverbs is unadulterated wisdom. I mean, Solomon was still working with God. But when he wrote Ecclesiastes, um, someone said he wrote it like he was drunk. But he said there was a wise poor man who was in a city that was besieged and everybody in that city including the wealthy people were held bound by the by the siege around the city now the man by his wisdom saved the city but he remained poor and i concluded that man was not wise if you have this strategy you should not remain poor if there are wealthy people in the city you want to save it should be like david what would be given to whoever conquers this goliath the person who has this strategy should not remain poor, except his foolishness is, is, is sponsored by his village people. And finally, strategy is the most important factor in leadership, military and organizations, even in government. That is why you will notice the higher you progress in an organization, the more involved you get with strategy. The more involved you get with strategy. The closer you are to the top, the more involved. If you go to um, to war, I have heard, and I believe read, that there are, there is a room in war that is the most important room. It is not where the weapons are kept. It is where the strategy goes on. We watch football and we enjoy football. But if you've ever watched a coaching session, when the coach speaks with the people, you'd see him with a board and you'd be point, drawing pictures of where the player should be. Because that is what decides the end result of the game. It is not necessarily the skill of the player. It is the strategy of the team. Now, what is an effective strategy? First, strategy means wisdom. It is the know-how. The know-what is knowledge. We all know what we want to achieve. You want to become a committed reader. You want to be able to read consistently and translate this knowledge to results. But wisdom is the bridge between knowledge and results. And that wisdom is a synonym for strategy. The word wisdom is a synonym for strategy. Strategy is knowing how to get what you want. I was going to show us a video and I believe I still am going to share that video. Um, okay, so I'll share this video with us now. And I want us to see the wisdom in strategy. I have deliberately reserved the video because I, I believe some instructional material will be very important. So there is this. Um, so this young man was in a situation where there were moths all around. The moths have come to, they were attracted by the light and they were all around the house. And he wanted to get rid of them. You would see the difference between hard work and smart work here. Okay, so let me know when you can see my screen, please. Some people might have seen this video before, but if you haven't, just watch. Has, has anyone seen this video before? Can you all see my screen? Can everybody see my screen? Can anybody see my screen? Okay, thank you. So this... He could, he could have gotten um, a broom or something to try to get rid of the moth. But if you look at the wisdom here, you would know it is not necessarily by... He has just guided him away with his phone's flashlight instead of sweating and getting them one after the other because he had a strategy that works. That is an effective strategy. An effective strategy is simply a strategy that works. It incorporates when who, how, where, and action. Action is the most important part. It doesn't matter how well you define this first four. If action is missing, the strategy would be ineffective. An effective strategy is what makes efforts produce results. What makes efforts produce results? 
I don't want to jump ahead of myself. Why do you need an effective strategy to avoid fruitless labor? The scripture says the labor of the foolish. When I understood the scripture, it made me become more conscious about strategy. It says the labor of the foolish man wearied every one of them because he doesn't know the way to the city. Now, one person is laboring. Everybody is suffering. It wearies every one of them so when a leader of a of a particular group of people lacks direction everybody who labors along with that leader would weary themselves out to get improved results and that was jacob's situation when he was at laban's house to improve your efficiency i'd like us to read about the man rg Letonia at her spare time and how he transformed the world by improving or by bringing in health moving equipment before the advent of bulldozers and caterpillars, they used to move earth from place to place with donkeys. And it was by his, his thoughts and his strategy that the world has come to where it is today. To so outsmart your adversaries. I said earlier that Jesus' crucifixion was a strategy that the devil um, was oblivious of. If not, he would have maybe done something to stop it. And finally, to failure prove your efforts. I'm trying to go through this very quickly so we can get to the other ones. To failure prove your efforts. It says, if you serve under somebody, this is the scripture, and this person has done accounts, he has, he has, he has audited his accounts, and he can see clearly that some fraudulent things have taken place. And I was describing an um, unrighteous person. He said, will this person now begin to call all the people he has bribed in the past? You, how much do you owe the king? 100 pounds. Cancel it. Write 80. He says, so that when he is kicked out, he would have a place to go. That's a strategy. It's a strategy. It may not be the best of strategy, but strategy failure proves your efforts. So people who maximize leadership through strategy. At, I've talked of Jesus and the Jesus and, and God and the Jesus strategy. Now Moses and the structure strategy. Moses, while they were in the wilderness, spent all his time judging people, and God sent Jethro to him to say, "You would kill yourself if you continue this way." And what wisdom did he give him? He said, "Find men." You see, the wisdom Jethro gave Moses is still in force today. Is still in use in every system in the world. He said, find men of wisdom and reputable character. That is capacity and character. Everywhere reputable leaders are in the world today, those are the only two qualifications. Capacity, can he do the job? Character, is he a trustworthy person? And he put that structure and he said them, some over a thousand, some over a hundred, some over fifty, some over ten. And that strategy saved him for, from wearing out. David was going for a battle as well and he was told to god told him specifically not to just attack them the second time he was going but to wait for a specific sound before he goes i want to ask before i talk on the next people which are contemporary people sam walton how many people know sam walton here let me see an emoji in the chat box or just tell me i know him the audio is bad is he just um from Mr. Joshua's end, or can everybody, can everybody hear me well? Please, let's unmute and relate. Uh, I, okay, okay, it was bad initially. I, I figured out why it was, why it's bad, but it's too late to adjust that now. So you might still shake once in a while. I'm sorry for that. Who knows Sam Walton here, anybody? I think a couple of people should. We talked about Sam Walton in our previous, okay, thank you, uh, in our previous um, boot camps. Sam Walton founded a store. It started as a kiosk, a, just a normal street shop. What you call a kiosk in Nigeria, what you call a high street shop or an off license shop in the UK. Walmart, thank you. But if you look at Asda today, I was walking past Asda in, in Milton Keynes. I think it was two days ago. And I was just blown away because one person incubated this and developed the strategy. And it got to a place where he 
it replicated the store after it had grown in size in every state in America. And I will come to how to apply this to our lives. How to, to settle down and, and be able to use strategy to duplicate our work. And the day Sam Walton died, this very same day he died, is he had four children. His four children pushed four people out of the wealthiest ten people in the world. And they climbed that list because of his investment. Now, this, this is a very funny one though. Bill Gates and Steve Baumer. They are still on the Forbes list. They were they were colleagues at Harvard. And they played a very, very dangerous game. It was they, they titled it um, who can pass in the list time, something like that. And the game was they wanted to really do business, but they had a very demanding course they were studying in school. So the game was that they would do business. They would not. They didn't go to classes. They didn't do anything. They would do business until about one or two weeks before exams. And then they would lock themselves out and rip themselves to stupor and go for the exams. And see how high they can score. And they did that consistently and got consistent and got A's consistently. Now that was the strategy that worked for them and they were able to combine it. The thing about strategy is it doesn't have to be conventional the question is does it work does it work i know people would say some things are not practicable but does it work does it work america is the is at least for now is still the current world superpower but how was america built it was a strategy and you cannot talk about the building of america without talking about benjamin franklin he was the one who was able, with the other um, founding fathers, incorporate the idea that a nation's quality is not in the quality of the structures. It's in the quality of the people. And through that, they founded the first public library and they made reading a culture. Within 50 years of America's founding, when people went from England to America, they were shocked at the level of knowledge the common man on the street had because of the strategy they had put in place and when the common man on the street is very empowered with knowledge you know what to turn what's uh, how much that would impact on the nation's economy if you think of it today the poorest nations in the world are the nations with the poorest human capital that's still the strategy responsible for nation building you don't build a nation by building roads you don't build a nation by building amenities you build the nation by building the people and you don't necessarily build people by giving them certificates or having university degrees you build people by making them have a consistent hunger for knowledge by helping them realize that knowledge is essential uh, real madrid i would skip some and um for want of time vocabulary development i used this strategy once as i was inspired by the holy ghost to improve my vocabulary i noticed my vocabulary was very poor and i thought of a way to improve it but as i thought something came to mind i read books i, I had started reading books consistently then this was about six years ago and as i was reading the books i would come across what i didn't know and check the dictionary every time and it was slowing me down so I decided every time I come across a word, I will circle it. My idea is echoing. Is it still echoing? Is my audio still echoing? No, not anymore. All right, thank you. So I realized that every time I stumbled across the word and I checked it, it slowed me down. So I began to circle the word. And every Sunday, I would write down about 30 to 50 of them and go to the dictionary and literally write down their meanings. Because every time I checked for the meaning of the word, the next time I went back to check, I would have forgotten. I don't know if it happens to anybody. Does it happen to anybody? When you read a book, you check for the meaning of the word and the next time you see it, you still don't know it. Anybody? Do I have a witness here? Any witnesses? Good. So I thought, what could I do to, to remedy this permanently? After I had written down the definitions, every day from Monday to Saturday, I would read those definitions twice. I would literally read them slowly, use them in sentences twice. By the Sunday, I could close my eyes, point at any word in the book, 
see the word and define it without going back to the dictionary and the definition stuck at the end of the year i applied the strategy and i had learned over 1200 words new words to my vocabulary so i was trying to i was checking the same words before the difference was strategy if you change your strategy you will achieve your goals that's the summary of all these examples if you change your strategy you would achieve your goals but how do you draw your effective strategy how do you draw your effective strategy and i'm using a, a, a personal development as a case study understand your goal not just don't just say you want to read really understand the goal and Un understand it when you understand your goal you know when you have achieved victory there is something called pyrrhic victory if you don't understand your goal you could have pyrrhic victory pyrrhic victory is a victory in which the losses are so great it is equivalent to a defeat if a if a if a if an army goes to war with ten thousand soldiers and they won the they won they won the battle and came back with a thousand five hundred soldiers that's a that's a victory you cannot celebrate that's a pyrrhic victory so understand your goal what would it look like when you've achieved your goal if you want to draw a strategy then the second thing i can overemphasize this to thyself be true you can lie to everybody else, although you shouldn't lie. <laughs> but if you lie to yourself, life will tell you the truth in a couple of years. Be very, very sincere with yourself. Know what you can do and what you cannot do. Be very sincere with yourself. Understand where you are. And this might seem a bit out of his personal development. Why do I need to pray? You see, you need to pray because sometimes strategies need to be interpreted. To be able to be applied. God was giving um, Pharaoh a strategy. But if there was no interpreter in that land, they would have all perished. And interpretations are not, for, they, they are not gotten from books. Joseph, the person who was gifted with interpretations, said with his mouth, Do not interpretations belong to God? Some people might have noticed, but we are approaching an age now where if you if you scorn God, it's coming gradually and it's going to be a deluge. If you scorn God, there are certain secrets you don't have access to anymore. I know the world has had their few day in the last decades and centuries, but prayer cannot be overemphasized in drawing your strategy. Read, research, and review until a pattern appears. When you read about five lives and um, five people's lives or five organizations, you would notice something. All of a sudden, the dots will begin to connect in your head. The dots will begin to connect in your head and you'd see, ah, I see. And then you can pull your strategy from there and then get living examples, particularly with study, book reading. Many of us have tried to read and will stop down the line. Walk up to people that you know have done it successfully. People you cannot access, get their books or articles if you, if you don't have the appetite to read a book. How have they been able to stay consistent? How have they been able to stay consistent? And then be humble enough to submit to divine guidance. It may not make sense, but be humble enough to submit to divine guidance. And when drawing a strategy, early in the morning, or when you have a clear head is the best. And I'm saying this strategy thing because I want us to go beyond this boot camp. Beyond this boot camp, I want us to settle and really ask ourselves, okay, how will I not be back at a place where I cannot remember the last time I picked up a book? What, would I, what do I need to do to make this habit consistent? And the next slide would answer that question. Systems. How to work out your strategy. Incorporating failure-proof systems. 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 Systems are methods that run independently but can influence your behavior. You know, when, when you have a whirlwind, certain things can stop a whirlwind. When a tornado begins to move, it moves everything in its path. When you put yourself in a system, that is what the tornado, it controls you literally. So, and how do you know you are setting up a system? It is something that you set up or something that you have volunteered to be a part of but that you really do not have control over or you have surrendered your control to i was discussing this with somebody today and please you permit me to to use this as an example if for instance you you struggle with too much tv 
you can remove the fuse from your from your TV plug and give it to somebody if it is yours alone. If it's for the family, I didn't ask you to do it though. Uh, but you can give the remote to somebody. Just do something. Put a system in place. But the best system you can put in place is people. People. Get people around you that would affect your behavior. And it's tied to the second, second thing here as well. Examples. Not, not just people that you ask now. People that in a way can affect the things you do and give them authority. When I noticed I want to I want to stay away from my phone for longer, I put a limit on my phone and it has to set you have to set a password to change the limit. And I gave my younger brother to set the password and I told him never to tell me except it's an emergency. Systems. Systems. You want to read your Bible consistently, the best system you can find is find somebody who's doing it already and work with the person and tell the person to hold your hand. And that's accountability. And that's what this will to lead is a system. Many of us know that we have promised ourselves we will finish that book in one week before you came to will to lead. But it didn't happen. But because you know somebody would ask you. So when you are incorporating your strategy, you have to sit back and say, okay, if I change my mind, what is the stopper? What is the blocker? Who is the person that can do something to prevent me from turning back on my plan. Then pilot it, test run your system. And when you put it to work, go all out. Go all out. It would cost you, but determine to go all out. And I see God helping us in Jesus' name. Amen. That's the end of the teaching. I would like us to lift up our voices and ask for the grace. There is a grace required to carry out every responsibility. Lord, the grace to set, to, 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 to set my strategies effectively. The grace to draw effective strategies and comply with them. Some of us have drawn strategies consistently. But the grace for compliance is not there. Let's lift up our voices and ask, Father, embrace me to draw strategies consistently and comply with them in the name of Jesus. Please, if you can unmute yourselves, that would be appreciated. Embrace me, Lord, to draw strategies.